Thank you, David, uh, so much. And I'm truly honored to be here with you today. Uh, thanks for giving me your precious 10 minutes. And I'll try to respect your 10 minutes as maximum capacity I can exercise. I want to thank Jim Flynn, the president of Global Peace Foundation. I think your commitment to this issue is well known. We truly appreciate it. And people are policies. Policies we talk about today and in coming days, we cannot formulate and advance those policies without people. That means you. So nobody said this issue of unification, North Korea crisis, however you call it, it's not going to be one straight linear line. It's a very complicated process, ups and downs, twists, unexpected turns here and there. But the bottom line is, this is a journey we are doing together. And I want to remind you, this is a continuing journey we're going to do in coming months and years. I want to recognize, I want to recognize a few uh, uh, guests here. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Bay, I never met you before. Uh, you are wearing a beautiful blue suit, very elegant. I like the color blue. To me, in my color code, blue is freedom and liberty. I cannot imagine things that you had to go through. You have certainly very unique experience. I think no one else in this volume uh, had an experience you had to went through, had, had to go through. So your presence means a lot to me personally, and I hope to many others in this room. And also, this is a collective process, as we know. So I really want to say, as we are doing this kind of forums in Washington and Seoul, there are many key stakeholders and players. And one of the people that who came to my mind is a Dr. Bakse Il. I don't know how many of you know him, but uh, he is the founder of the uh, Korea's Hansan Foundation. Uh, I know through my previous engagement with the GPF, he was a critical pillar of this kind of dialogue and everything. And I see Mr. Lee Sang Baek, who was the, basically the brain and right hand man of Dr. Park. Dr. Park passed away two years ago, and I just want to recognize uh, his vision and everything. And here, we have a special guest from the National Assembly delegation. I hope you're enjoying your visit to Washington, D.C. And I understand that thanks to Dr. William Parker, you had a very special occasion and meetings yesterday with the National Security Council. I hope that inspired you, and hopefully you can do more things as you go back to Seoul. And Honorable Sir, uh, we enjoyed your compassionate speech. I think that's the collective voice from the National Assembly. We certainly hope that you carry on and follow through your pledge you just made today with us. The Heritage Foundation, we have a vision statement. The Heritage Foundation is about building an America where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, civil society flourish. Let's take one step back. Think about these four words. Freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and civil society. They are not unrelated values and principles. We all need these principles if we want to reach, achieve what we want to do here. I think Korea is eager to, and politicians and civil society members, we are all eager to build a Korea, unified Korea, where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and civil society flourish. So that's why we are here today. I mean, my role, I don't have all the solutions. I don't have any single solution to North Korean crisis. But I do know why we are here today, this morning. And, you know, this session's title is that Unification and Post-Cold War Era Framework. Let me remind you of the session title here. Of course, as David alluded earlier, divided Korea has been the product of Cold War. But unified Korea, hopefully, it shouldn't be and will not be the product of Cold War. 
I really mean it. This is a new opportunity. I was really inspired and encouraged by Dr. Parker's speech yesterday. I hope if you didn't hear that yesterday, you should read it. This is opportunity. The opportunity that perhaps you've been waiting for. President Trump, nobody expected. I don't know how many of you were excited about his campaign last year. I think everybody was assuming it would be the other side. So basically, last year, things that shouldn't have happened, couldn't have happened, wouldn't have happened, happened. I mean, you can say Brexit. You can say the election of Trump. And in Korea, what happened? You did something we never seen before in a peaceful, dynamic way. This is the setting we are in today. The Cold War framework will not be changed overnight, but it can be amendable as we work together. So in Korea last year, I think the one big message you sent out to the world is that Korea is vibrant, functioning democracy. You basically said, we cannot tolerate this kind of political, corrupted exercise. We want to change. And you brought in change. Well done, really. Very, very, very proud achievement you have made. Now, let's fast forward. November 15th, today is 15th, 2017. So 2017 is very unique because we now have the President Trump in the White House. And we had the election of South Korea's new president. I don't think we have this kind of, you know, same year, same, you know, new presidents, two new presidents in Washington and Seoul in, in, in a single year. This is a new. So this is kind of get to know process we are in too. I think Kim Jong-un in North Korea, he's very much curious about what's happening too because I'm sure he was betting on the other side as well. So my point is that this is a completely new setting that's been given to us and we should exercise this opportunity as much as we can. How? That's the question we have to answer. That's why we are here to, to the, together to talk about the issue, not to find solution, but to think through what we can do as a group. So if I may, I want to suggest a few things here, maybe one single thing. I see Dr. Ryu, I think he said yesterday something like, you know, vision without action is daydreaming. And action without vision is kind of chaos. We need both, vision and action. So vision, if I may, we want to build a, we want to make, we want to create a unified Korea where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, civil society flourish. If that's agreeable vision, I think we should work together. I think time to act is now, not tomorrow or maybe next year. I'll think about what, what, what I can do, let's see. But this is time we should act together. Now, this is not a single bullet issue, so we're going to get together again and again as we go. But I just want to say, not because I'm, you know, work, I'm working at the Heritage Foundation. I consider myself as a product of the Heritage Foundation, by the way. But Heritage Foundation, we say, without heritage, without heritage, every generation starts over. I want you to think about that. Without heritage. Not Heritage Foundation, without heritage, every generation starts over. Korea is very well known for lots of lots of heritage that Korean people should be proud of. I mean, to me, it could be this, to you, it could be that. But one thing that I can tell you about is the heritage of, if I may borrow Dr. Moon's book, Hong Ik Ingan. So many values and principles, I think Korea have, 
Korea has inherited over the past years and years. And this is time to exercise that values and principles and together. And like I said, people are policies, and that's why we are here today. Of course, we can talk about many policy options, strategic engagement, engagement what should be done. But I think what's happening in front of us is a true opportunity. President Trump had a, such a wonderful visit and very constructive visit to Asia. It's an opportunity once again. And the fact that we are here in Washington today, I think that's really, really a positive and constructive step we are taking. So I truly believe this is time to work together, act together, share our views and perspectives. Our journey, like I said earlier, it shouldn't be about dividing and subtracting. Our journey is something very constructive and forward-looking. So I suggest whatever policy discussions and civil society engagement we should do, we should try to do, multiply, and add. And I believe that's our mission, and I think that we are ready to do so. so I really appreciate your attention to me. If you have any questions, of course, we'll be happy to answer that. Thank you very much.